All right, guys. Before we start in on our PLC timers, uh, we've got to go over the on-delay and off-delay contacts and the options that we have for each of them. We need something to relate back to. The PLC programming is hard enough, but if we don't understand what the timers options are, then how are we supposed to understand how the PLC is working? So we have two different options. We have an on-delay timer or an off-delay timer. For an on-delay, there are two different types of contacts. There's a normally open that's going to take some time to close. And there's a normally close that's going to take some time to open. For our off delay, obviously that has to be energized and then de-energized. So it's a normally open contact that's going to take some time to open. And over here we have a normally closed contact that's going to take some time to revert back to its closed state. So on delay we have two contacts, normally open time to close and normally closed time to open. And the off delay, we have a normally open time to open and a normally closed time to close. All right, so let's take a look at our on delay options. The normally open time to close uh, looks like this, where we have a normally open contact. So gravity would act on this and pull this down. And the arrow is pointing up, telling us that it is an on delay timer. Whereas over here, we have a closed switch right here. And so this guy is a normally closed contact because gravity would act on this to close it. It's an on delay, so it's going to take some time to open. Okay, so those are our two options there. With this guy right here, uh, if the timer is de-energized, then the contact is open. When the, con the timer is energized, there's a time delay and actually closing. Whereas this guy, when you have the timer de-energized, then it's in its rest state of closed. And then after some time when you've energized the timer, then there's a time delay in this actually changing state and opening up. Okay, let's take a look at each one of them. Okay, so we'll start off with the normally open time to close contact. So that's this guy right here. We have a time delay of 10 seconds. So in our first position here, the switch is open. Our timer is de-energized. This is still in its rest state, and the light is off. We're then going to close the switch, energize the timer. When that guy start, when the timer starts being energized, then the timing period starts. So that's where uh, the accumulated value is building up to the preset. Uh, but the light is still off because this has not changed state yet. Once that accumulated value is equal to the preset then all of a sudden those contacts change. That's like the done bit changing. And all of a sudden the output, in this case the light, is illuminated. Okay, then when we switch the S1 open again, it de-energizes the timer. And at that point, the contacts instantaneously go back to its rest state. And in that case, the light's back off. Okay, there's our timing diagram there. Right, so there is uh, our switch being turned on, right? So closed, the timer being energized, takes a little bit of time before the contacts change state. Contact changes state, turns on the light, and then when the switch is opened, the timer is de-energized, and the contact reverts right back to its rest state. Okay, the next one on an on delay, our only other option there is a normally closed time to open. So same thing again, the switch is open in the first position. This is de-energized. If this is de-energized for an on delay timer, then this contact is still in its rest state and the light is on. In this case, again, we have a 10 second delay. We switch that switch closed, energize the timer, but this contact does not change state yet. The light is still on. It's timing to 10 seconds, so the accumulated value is building up to our preset of 10 seconds. And at that point, once it reaches that value, then the switch is going to, sorry, then the switch is going to change state. When it changes state, then the light is going to turn off. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna open this and de-energize the timer. So we open up the switch, de-energize the timer and in that case this contact goes right back to its rest state so when you de-energize an on delay timer your contacts go right back instantaneously to their rest state in this case it is a normally closed contact 
And so the current flows through that contact and the light is back on. Okay, there's our timing sequence here. So again, there's our switch. We have that delay here of 10 seconds. The light is on for the entire time. But then when our timing ends up with the accumulated value equaling the preset, then the, ch the contact changes state. In this case, this would open. The light would be off. And then when we switch that switch open ag again, that de-energizes the timer. This goes right back to its rest state, and the light is back on. Okay, let's go over our off delay symbols now. This is a lot to take in, so you may want to like pause, go back a little bit, review those on delay timers, and then start with these off delay timers. Okay, for this guy, we have a normally open time to open, and the other contact over here is a normally close time to close. Again, these are both drawn in the way that gravity would act on that switch. Gravity would act to pull this down. Gravity would act to keep this closed. And we're seeing that it's an off delay timer by the fact that the arrow is pointing down. Okay, let's go through the sequences here of each of those guys. Okay, so let's start off with the normally open, time to open contact. So again, we have the switch open, the timer is de-energized, if the timer is de-energized, then this contact stays in its rest position. And in this case, the light is off. When we close that switch, the timer is energized. At that point, the contacts instantaneously change. The light turns on because this is now closed and we've got current flowing to our load. Then we open the switch and you'll see that this is still lit. It's still lit because the contact will take some time to before it goes back to its rest state of open. So it's going to take 10 seconds and after 10 seconds, then it's going to drop out. And that's when the light is going to revert back to the off state. Okay. So an off delay timer needs to be energized. And then when it's de-energized, that's when the timing starts. Okay, here's our timing diagram here. Again, switch being turned on, energizing the timer. The contact changed state right away. Then we de-energize the timer. The light still stays on. And then after that 10 second delay, then this reverts back to its rest state. The rest state is open. And in that case, our light turns off. All right, the other option for an off delay is a normally closed, and it's going to take some time to go back to its closed state. So in the first position, again, our switch is open. The timer is off. This is in its rest position. And in this case, the rest position, again, is in normally closed. Okay, so it's normally closed, and this is energized. Then we're going to close that switch and energize the timer. When you energize an off delay timer, the contacts change instantaneously. Okay, so at that, that point, the light is off. And then we're waiting for this timer right here to be de-energized. When we de-energize it, then the timing starts, right? So that's when the timing of 10 seconds happens, where our accumulated value is reaching our preset. And then once the accumulated value reaches the preset, then it's gonna go back to its rest state and the light will turn back on. Okay, if we take a look at our timing diagram here, then we've got our switch being closed, the timer being <coughs> energized. At that point, the light turns off. Okay, then we open up the switch, which turns off the, the timer, but that's when the timing happens. And it takes some time to go back to its rest state and the rest state is that it's normally closed. So there's our rest state there. And at that point, when it's closed, we get that current flowing over to our light. All right, guys, that covers all of our different timers. Give me a few seconds and I'll show you a pneumatic timer. I find looking at the pneumatic timer uh, helps me understand to understand both the normally open and the normally closed time contacts. All right, guys, so I'm going to use this pneumatic timer to describe how the on delay and the off delay timer work. So on the top here, 
I've got an adjustment screw right here and by adjusting this screw right here I can change the timing of when the air comes into this diaphragm on the top. So there's a diaphragm on the top here and by adjusting this it allow the air to come in and out of this diaphragm and that diaphragm decides how this cam reacts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show uh, how energizing the coil on an on delay timer will give us our timing. The coil contacts are here and here. So that would be the, like bringing our power into the TON timer or enabling the TON timer. So think of the enable as the coil. And when we enable that timer, then we would energize this coil. That coil will then pull this core in. And you can see that when that core pulls in, this cam is going to start to slowly move depending on the speed at which that air can actually get into this diaphragm. So I'm going to simulate energizing the coil. And you can see there that it takes a little bit of time before the contacts change state. You'll hear a little click there for the contacts changing state. So I'll energize the coil. And there you can hear a little bit later those contacts are changing state. What I'll do is I'll change the, let me change that uh, orifice there and we'll change the timing of the timer. Okay, so in order to change that, I am physically moving this and I'm either increasing or decreasing my time there. And by changing that, that's like changing my preset value. So now I'm gonna enable the timer. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven seconds there. I want five seconds, so I'm going to change the delay just slightly. Okay, I'm going to re-energize the timer. One, two, three, four, five, six. And not bad. I'm still looking for six. Just going to tweak it just a touch. There we go. One, two, three, four, five. Ah, there we go. You can hear that click at five seconds. So an on-delay timer you have to energize and a little bit later the contacts are going to change state. So we can hear one, two, three, four, five. And you can hear that little click. So the contacts have changed state. Now I'm going to de-energize that on-delay timer and it will push back on that spring, get all the air out and the contacts will change state right away. There we go, so the contacts have changed state right away. On the back end of this guy, you can hear that little click there, it also has an off delay timer. So it has an on delay timer and an off delay timer. Okay, so we'll take a look at the off delay timer on the bottom here. So for an off delay timer, we have to energize the coil. So I'll simulate energizing the coil by pushing in the core. And that pushes down on this portion right here exhausts all the air out and changes the contacts right away. And when I de-energize the coil, you'll see that this takes some time to go back to its rest state. And after that time, the, ch the contacts will revert back to their normal state. So I'm de-energizing the coil. One, two, three, four. We got a four second delay there before those contacts change state. So one more time, the on delay timer on the top has to be energized. When it energizes, it takes some time for the contacts to change state. There we go, we just heard that click with the changing of the contacts. When I de-energize the on-delay timer on the top here, then it exhausts all the air out and those contacts revert right back to the rest state. Okay, on the bottom here, we've got the off-delay. The off-delay timer has to be energized and then de-energized. That's when the timing happens and it takes some time to revert back to its rest state. One more time, energize, de-energize. One, two, three, four seconds. We heard that click and it goes back to its rest state. So hopefully that helps you to understand what an on-delay timer and an off-delay timer does. Uh, the next videos in the playlist will look at a ton timer and a TOF timer, but you can always revert back to this pneumatic timer to understand the different components. The enable component we're going to say is the actual coil. The done bit is going to be the actual contacts. 
and then the preset value is like adjusting this value or this value to change the time that it takes for the contacts to actually change state. On delay needs to be energized and take some time to change state. Reverts right back to its rest state when you de-energize it. And in off delay on the bottom here, you have to energize that coil, then de-energize the coil, and that's when the timing happens to revert back to its rest state. All right, guys, thanks for your patience. We'll see you on the next video.